Thanks for joining us for Politically Incorrect Knitters. I'm Deplorable Knitter, and I'm joined, as always, by the fabulously talented Ann Pinkova. And today we have a very special guest. We're joined by Von Kavitz, who is a, a maker and a, a designer and an outspoken uh, Christian. And we're really excited to have her on to talk with us today. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm so excited for, to do this. We're excited to have you. We were hoping that you could give us a little bit of your background, tell us how you started designing and, and how you got, um, you know, about your video that went viral and things like that. Um, yeah, so I'm, I have been knitting, I have been crocheting, I'm a crochet master, I've been crocheting for a long, long, long time. And uh, when I got married, I picked it up and then, and then I had so much stuff and then I was like, okay, honey, I think I want to, uh, I, we, I need money for yarn and I need to do something with all the stuff that I'm making like crazy. Right. And so um, we were like, why don't you sell it on online? And, and then I heard something about Etsy and I was like, okay, but I've never been on the internet, like never been on the internet. My, my husband, I used to call my brother to Google stuff for me, you know, like that's how far <laughs> removed I was from the internet. And then my husband created a little Facebook page for me and I started my uh, Etsy shop. And then I discovered Facebook and then all these, all these knitters and crocheters and, you know, and I created a Facebook group for the dare to be original and, and, and I had all these makers come in and join and, and then I didn't have any rules. All we just had was just to be kind and cordial with one another. And that Facebook group grew really, really fast just because of for, and it wasn't just knitters and crocheters. It was artists and artisans, jewelry makers, everything it was that's why it was dare to be original I just wanted creatives in the space and right. the only thing that the only restriction I had was females only just because I was married and I didn't want to deal with internet weirdos so <laughs> I was like I can contain the women but I don't know what is going on with the opposite sex so I was just so that's the only stipulation that I had in my Facebook group Fast forward to two years ago. So I'm a very quiet person. We, we just do all knit and crochet, at least that's my forte. And then two years ago, was it 2018? When, you know, the little wolf came into our hen house somehow because we were in your utopia. And one of my uh, dear friends on the Facebook group had a, made a post that was so random and she said, if you are a person of color, if you are a minority, um, if you are someone like that, like, uh, and you feel like you're not seen, I just want you to know that you are loved and I see you. And I go, hmm. I was like, that's weird. And that's random, you know? And then I just, and I was like, what is going on here? You know? And then I watched the conversation go on and like, you know, so people were commenting. So it seems like they were aware of something that I was not aware of. Right. So I'm not like, because like I said, I, I engage with my little community community in the knitting world, but I also don't really follow blogs. I also, I'm not following, you know, big makers. And I just have a handful of people that I, I see online, you know, and then, because if you're busy looking at stuff on the internet, you're not making, right? Right. So we're scrolling, we're not creating. So that was my always my big thing. If we're if we're staying distracted on what's on that black box, your your hands aren't moving, right? Right. So I try, yeah. I, I run into those problems all the time. <laughs> like if I was exactly, I was like, so so be, so before that, that's I was always busy making and creating. So then she, um, so then. I was like, okay, and I'm, I'm watching them talk about some, some, something bad happened, you know, and I was just like, okay, I, I don't know what's going on. I, I've never dealt with racism. I don't, you know, I, I've had racist, like, incidents, you know, I'm a minority. I, I mean, I grew up, like, I had to learn the language. Like, I, I know what racism is. I, it's, I've been a victim of it many times, but, um, but I never, like, it was never, on the masses and, and I'm an individualist. So when somebody treats me uh, badly, it's between me and that human being, not right. between me and, the, and their family, their country, their city, their continent, their race, you know, their sex, you know what I mean? Their religion, like it's not, that's, that's a blanket statement that I choose not to make, right? right. 
So I never like looked at anything like that. So, but, but to come back and then all of a sudden one morning, and I always say that, and I never do it again, <laughs> 2 a.m. I had to go get up and then I picked up my phone and I scrolled Instagram at 2 a.m. And the knitting community is racist. And that's when I put my phone down. I was like, oh, this must be what she was talking about in the Facebook group a couple of days ago. What is going on here? You know? And then that's when I found out oh, there's a blogger that she said something nasty. She was horrible. She's a racist. And now, you know what I mean? The whole co the knitting community is racist. And, and that's when it just shook my world. Cause I was like, I have a Facebook group, almost a thousand women in there of all race, of all color, of all ages, you know what I mean? And we're all kind and loving to one another. So I just didn't want them to be distracted by this one incident of this one thing when I know what, I didn't at the time know what social justice warriors were. I didn't know what, you know what I mean? Like I've heard of idiots out there, but I didn't, didn't know, you know what I mean? And I know that there are bad people that are out to, you know what I mean? Stir pots and everything, but I just didn't um, uh, pay attention to them, right? And, but it was, it was really bothering me because I felt like as a minority, I am the leader of that Facebook group. I wanted to get up and say something and go, hey, wait a minute, I'm in the knitting community. I'm mm -hmm. in the yarn world and I'm a minority and this is not the case, you right. know what I mean? The right. knitting community is the most loving environment I have ever been a part of because it's an, it's an autonomous sport, you know what I mean? It's yarn, it sticks, and you create and you use your hands and we share and we commune and we, and we get ideas from one another and we share patterns with one another. We encourage, we teach the craft, we want to spread the craft, you know what I mean? Like I've never seen a more like loving utopia family than, than that. So I didn't want them to be like, wait, if some, somebody did something bad, don't judge the entire community over it. So that's why I made that video and said that, I don't know what that person did. And now after I made that video, did I go ahead and find the blog and read the blog and was like, what in the world is this? <laughs> like, wait, wait, this is all? Like, and I was like, uh, uh, what? <laughs> and by then, but by then I was, I was like, oh, these guys are just idiots. They're just looking for, you know, I was like, they're just looking for trouble. Like, so, and then, but I had made that video and I just said, you know what? I said my piece. I said, you guys protect your glass of water. There are crazies out there. Be careful what you drink. Keep your glass clean. You know what I mean? I thought that that message was, um, like solid enough to that people would have common sense about it mm -hmm. and then so that was January right so with that whole thing and then I so I didn't know that Maria Tuscan was in the middle of her own battle and war because she was in the heat of it which by the way you guys I watched that interview that you guys did with her amazing it was one of the best hours I spent so you guys oh, thank you job with talking like that was an awesome hour and that's when I was like, I got to be these two's best friends. How do I get on? How do I get on the show? <laughs> How do I tap their shoulders and get on there? But, um, but so, so fast forward. So I thought that was it. Do you know what I mean? So then I'm back into my own little world, you know, and I'm creating and I'm in my Facebook group and I'm, and I'm thinking everything's all fine and dandy. And then I wake up Sunday morning and I saw Ravelry. Oh, <laughs> Stand against racism. We stand against hate. We stand against, you know, we stand with Rav I was like, oh, I was like, I stand against all that. And I'm, and at that time I was like, now I'm not making, I don't want to make as much because I make one of a kind. I was like, I want to get into pattern designing. And so beginning of that year, that's when I wanted to be a designer. And I was like, I guess I better like get serious about Ravelry and everything. And so I, I had an account years ago when I was a knitter, but I never really accessed it until the beginning of that year in January. Um, and I was like, I'm going to be a pattern designer. That was my goal. I was like, I'm going to write patterns. I'm going to sell patterns and da, da, da. And then I'll shift away from the, the actual craft um, of making because I wanted to spread that way. And, and so when I saw Ravelry and then I, and then I was like, what is going on here? 
And then yeah. I read the policy and then I reread the policy <laughs> and then I reread it. And I'm saying English, I joke, English is my second <laughs> language. So I'm like, maybe I'm misunderstanding something. <laughs> so I, I would message one person and then I would say like out of one out of 30 that I would know online, they're all standing with Ravelry. And then the one's going, hmm. And then I would, then, then that was the one person I was like, but they didn't say this. They didn't say that. They didn't, you know what I mean? Right. They're not talking about what they're saying is very intentional and, um, and they're overreaching because they didn't say, you know, we stand against, you know what I mean? The, basically all, all they said was all Trump supporters were open white supremacy. Right. <laughs> was the was in the policy that was I, the policy. I know and and just just to kind of pause what you're saying a little bit um that you know before you came on I I re-watched your video about this I'm like oh all these emotions again <laughs> because you know similar to you I wake up in the morning and I look at Instagram and I say what's this and I'm like I you know like you know DK jokes that I didn't know I was a Russian bot like you know I've <laughs> I, I didn't know that I was evil. Um, I also didn't know I was a white supremacist. You'd think that some of my own red flags would have gone off about that, that, you know, the, con the conflict of interest between I'm against that. No, wait, I guess I'm for that. What do I do? Um, just this sort of like horrible. <laughs> yeah. I'm, fighting. I'm like, I got to defend me being a white supremacist now. Right. And, <laughs> and, you know, to, to take it seriously, it was just this, this gut punch, this horror It's like, I've, I mean, people are mean to each other on the internet all the time, but I've never even, I mean, of course it wasn't, you know, they weren't pointing you, but I've never been that openly insulted and defamed by a website that I was on before that I was, it was just, it, it was a clear and, and precise decision. And I was just like, I had to really think about that. Cause I was like that week that honestly, I joke about it now because we're what, we're a year and a half away from, from that, that mm -hmm. fact. Right. But yeah. at that time, that week was the hardest week of my life. Cause I was like, I've done video. So, so prior to that, that diversity video was the hardest video that I had to do because I'm addressing something that I know is very, um, that is very uh, sensitive to some people because you know, I I make my little Asian jokes, but I'm but I'm also like, not uh, I'm not easily offended because I'm I'm a common sense enthusiast. So I, I you know, I, I'm not politically I'm not I'm not political I'm not you know what I mean. I I do, I only I just love to create. So I, to me, I'm not in that world. I'm aware of it, you know. And if I, if I was to be, uh, I'm definitely not democratic. I'm definitely, I, I can't vote for, I cannot vote for a political party that supports generational genocide. Mm -hmm. That's, that's my, that's my first line. You know what I mean? Take right. that off the lit table and then maybe we could have a discussion, but until that's off the table, I'm not even going to talk about that. You know what I mean? Cause we, we will have nothing in common because that, that's the first line, right? That's my mm -hmm. first line of defense. Generational genocide. Are you for it or are you against it? You know, you know, and then so, but so anything else, like so to to for me to make one vote and all of a sudden I'm getting accused of being alt-right and white supremacist and a Nazi and all that stuff, I was just like, what? Where where are we here? You know? And it was yeah. it, to do that, that was the hardest week because everybody I knew was going the opposite way mm -hmm. so many unfollows so many and I never unfollowed anybody they were all unfollowing me because I made one stand and I said hey I'm a pro-life voter I don't know if you knew that but I make one vote mm -hmm. <laughs> and I vote to choose life right and all of a sudden like I'm standing here going what what is going on here and the vitriol that came from that post, the, the unfollows, the, the people that I knew, see, I wanted to talk to you guys about this because the people that I knew in the knitting world, like we were all so loving and so supportive of one another and as humans, cause we saw each other as humans. And then all of a sudden with, with that blog and then with, with, 
rivalry and all these uh, SJWs digging into, you know, all of a sudden they make us question. And when, like, for people that watch me lead a whole group for years, just like dismiss me in two seconds and go, oh, you're a horrible human being now. We're done with you. Like, what happened? Like, you know what I mean? Does it still hurt you guys? Because I don't mm-hmm. want it to, but I'm like, oh, her, not her too. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, it's it, a gut you know, I, I think for me, I was in a totally different boat because everybody hated me from the get-go. Like if they were following me, they knew what I stood for. Yeah, they, they, there was no question. So like, I got a lot of followers after the Ravelry thing, actually, because oh. they were like, oh, we like you. So well, this I was is where we different... go now because we're all lost wandering sheeps here because. Yeah, so I, I mean, I obviously it hurt and I actually was removed before the, the decision was made. So I was reeling from being removed and and I was trying to talk to them. I, because I never intended to break any rules or to, to upset anybody. So I was trying to work with them, especially Mm -hmm. because some crazy people said I did crazy things, but that's neither here nor there, (laughs) but, um, (laughs) you know, and Anne said when she woke up on Sunday and she felt like, you know, how sad it was and it wasn't right at her. I felt like it was right at me. I felt like if I hadn't put up my Trump patterns that that might not have happened. And so I like, oh, they may have gone that way, but I think that I probably put like, you know, the accelerant on the fire. <laughs> you know, here I was standing with my gas can. <laughs> Wait, so you were the one, you were the one person? Well, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know for sure. I just feel right. like well, probably my patterns. Yeah, just whenever, some of it. whenever this comes up, there seems to be some shadowy figure that somebody was like wandering around the forums screaming, I heart Trump and white supremacy. And I, again, I, if there are screen caps of this, I have never seen them. Some people say, well, if if trolls out there can't keep their mouth shut, then why should they have a platform to speak? Or why should there be politics? Yeah. It's it's all it's it's kind of again, it's not impossible that there was somebody like that. I'm not saying that everyone who not, supports no. Trump's are angels, but no. like it's From, I don't see I a any lot of it, proof of it. A lot of it was fabricated. No, and I think that they were looking for a reason to get rid of Trump supporters. And I'm not saying I was the cause, but I'm saying that perhaps the fact that my patterns that I put up divided people, it was just easier for them to do it. Because when I put up my last pattern, they said it was racist against brown and black people. And that's when I got removed because it was a racist statement. Um, and, and just to be clear, it said, keep America great. That's that's what my last pattern said. It said Trump 2020, keep America great. And and so that was racist against brown and black people. And therefore I was removed. And I just think that they were looking for a reason to get rid of people anyway. And I was just saying, I think my patterns might have just given them a little push to help them. I'm not saying I was the cause. People will think I like. Kind of their their proof of their intolerance too. That if there is but one person who disagrees with me on the platform I have, you gotta go. You're done. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> but well, I wasn't like I said. I wasn't in in it. I just like I saw that, and I was just like, okay, now I have to make a decision. Do what do I do? You know what I mean? First, I have first of all, I have to either stand with them or stand against them, and I have to tell them why I'm standing against them. And I had to pray long and hard about it because they didn't say that they, that they, they weren't for, um, that they stood against all the things that they claimed to be standing against. No, they basically just insinuated and proclaimed that if you support this person, you are this, that is such a wrong, that's a bigot statement. And that's, that's a prejudice. That's a prejudgment. That is, you know what I mean? That is all the things that they don't want you to, to be you know, that they claim us to, to be, you know what I mean? By prejudging. And, and, and so that, even if I didn't vote for Trump, even if I had, hadn't voted for Trump, I would have still been standing in the same boat going, that is a wrong statement because you can't assume 
just like you can't say the knitting community is racist. You know what I mean? I'm in the knitting community. We're not racist. Right. It's like, right. it's like, yeah. So, like you, so, you run a group and people aren't running and going to the group every day and say, by the way, I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you're just one. like. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I was like, so to make that blanket statement, that's where, that's where it's wrong. And so, um, so the, to make that assumption is where, and that's why, that's why I stood against the policy itself, because that policy is, is, is like the beginning of like. Uh, shutting your voice at the beginning of not having an opinion if you can't have a dialogue if you can't share ideas like those are the and here we are a year and a half later oh my god and the, we're like so far the like farther than I ever thought we would be with our fact checking on technology and now now like with um you can't even be a conservative you can't even support for 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 the president of the United States right now without you being you know, like censored in one way or another. It's just, it fascinates me. I'm like, how do we and, get this way? And in addition to that, I mean, we've we've said, you know, they said white, Trump is a white supremacist and no, he's not. There's a lot of proof against that. There's, and his policies and his actions, you just, you're just not a white supremacist and act and live the life that he lived. Um, but even the fact that that information is out there that that is you can you can see it you can find it it's on the internet the you mentioned the charlottesville thing before where he that the the claim statement is there's good people on both sides again if you if you listen to 45 seconds on either side of that he'll say not the white supremacists i condemn them entirely but the people who want the robert e lee statue taken down that half that some people want it kept up and some people want it torn down and he meant those people good people on both sides so that whole litany again, but that stuff like that, where you should be able that, you know, Biden and everyone else has brought that quote, that supposed quote up of Trump's so many times, and it is so easily refuted, but yet it is repeatedly, you know, repeated that it's said over and over and over again, and you should be able to say, hey, but that's an out of context quote, but right, still but it's the line that is still continued throughout it all. It's no. what they do. They take these lazy statements. They say Trump said white supremacists are good. Using that quote, they revelry says anybody who supports the tr president is a uh, racist. Like they, they, they work in. Um, I've said it a lot that you could teach my two small kids these like democratic talking points, and they could parrot them back to you. The problem is, is that they use these things that are hard to refute and to really talk about it. They don't give anybody an option. So they just say stuff like, oh, well, phone, you're, you're a racist. So you're a white supremacist. So move on. <laughs> well, you know, it's, you know? It, I find it, I find it fascinating that they would call uh, Trump the racist <clears throat> when Biden's the one that says, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. <laughs> he said right. so many bad things on the trail, but so that, he said so many bad things. But that's just that just goes to show you what what media wants you to hear and what they want to play. You know what I mean? And what well, they want to know. And then and in the knitting community, there was only two racist statements, like race racist statements that I actually saw in the knitting community, and 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 it was not Karen Templer's blog, by the way, you know what I mean? That just lit everything up. It was not that blog. You can go, I mean, if if some, if some a country and a land is foreign to you, yeah, it, it's alliteration, you know? Like they've never read fiction before. They've never read metaphors and you know what I mean? It's right. alliteration. You, It's like going to the moon. Yeah. Right. You go to a new place, it's intimidating. It doesn't matter if it's across the country or across the world or I go to New York the part I they don't get. get. I go to New York City and I'm like render catatonic because of all those humans. It's just I get claustrophobic. I'm like, there's too many of them. This is too many of them. Am I offending somebody if I tell you there's too many human beings walking around here? You know, know. Just, that's not it, gonna be a problem anymore. They've all left. So <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is true. Um, so the the two racist statements that I actually heard in the knitting community was there was an Asian uh, an Asian um, designer, a knitter, a, a crochet designer, and she was putting out a pattern, and she literally said in her comment, "White 
um, everybody gets it for free, but white people have to pay for it. I remember that. And I, I and I know it was, but I remember that. And so now by, by now, like I'm now, I'm now an SJW myself. <laughs> I'm now a social justice warrior fighting for common sense. You know? right. So like, so now I'm like, so I go on to that comment and I go, well, this is about as most racist statement I've ever seen if there isn't one, you know what I mean? Because when you judge a human by the color of their skin, you are a racist. This is a racist statement. And she can't. was just like, oh, right. You, you can't, I can't say, I guess we can't call the, the, the I guess we no, can't no. say it. Right? They, no, they say that white people are not able to be racist because everything is stacked in a white person's favor. So therefore we cannot have racism against us, that people cannot be racist against yeah. us. So um, you know, that. I shared with you guys that weird article that, you know, recently, of, you know, of, about uh, Asians now being equals to whites. So we're, we're no longer classified as a minority or, um, or marginalized anymore. We're, we're, we're as privileged as the whites. And I have to make the question, you know, if we're not as um, marginalized as the African-Americans and, 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 the, and the people of color, because we're not colored anymore, so yellow is no longer color because we're white. Yellow is white now, right? <laughs> I don't want Asians coming after me if they don't know that we're classified as yellow because and they're like, well, I've been yellow this whole time. I'm just gonna say if you learn something new, don't don't go after the don't go after these ladies for, for that for that education. <laughs> but so now yellow is now white. But I have to say, I don't remember seeing any yellow humans getting duly elected for eight years, you know what I mean? Because they were yellow. So I think we're, I think we, I, I think I can still argue for the marginalized <laughs> that I think I can, I think I can still keep me in BIPOC world. What do you think? Is that a good argument? Because, you know, Barack oh, Obama, you know, managed to I, get to be president. And I, I don't think you get to qualify as BIPOC because you don't fall into lockstep with them unfortunately i'm sorry i'm sorry to say that you don't think the same way so you you're already excluded well i i would say that um a you are marginalized and you're marginalized because you are proving that you can overcome these odds that's like well i can't succeed because i'm marginalized where you have schools like harvard and everywhere else who are purposefully like you have Asian students that come in and they have perfect GPAs and they're the top of whatever. And they are saying that they can't go to Harvard in those schools. And instead they're letting people come in with um, less good grades on a scholarship because they are a different race that they're kind of, you know, sweeping aside <laughs> again, very qualified, very smart Asians in favor of other groups. I'd say that's pretty racist. And I'd say that you're marginalized there. So you're not great, man. You're just... <laughs> when you judge a, a human being by the color of their skin, you are a racist. I don't care. I the this is the part that honestly fascinates me watching how how our world is becoming right now is we are at an age where we're arguing to wear our race goggles. We are like, we're arguing to wear them. You know what I mean? And I'm getting vilified when I say, remove your race goggles. When they say black lives matter, and when I'm saying all lives matter or baby lives matter, the vitriol that comes from that alone, it, 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 it fascinates me. I'm just, it, it, when BLM showed up on the scene in full force, what, this year, I knew the BLM that I'm dealing with because it is not about black lives. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I know the history of BLM. They are a racist demonic organization. The founder is a witchcraft, you know what I mean? Is a, so, so she says that. And then she says that the founder herself says it. See, we could watch their words. People like to think that I watch like the news or that I'm on mainstream and I repeat right wing, you know, says that we are trained Marxists, you know, determined to take down the American Western way of civil, like 
of life. And, and so you're like, oh, but, and then, and, but like, but don't you care about black people? I'm like, Black Lives Matter does not care about black people. Right. It, it reminds me of uh, one of the leaders of the, you know, the IRA um, in Ireland, of course. Um, but that his thing was that you should never, like, once you make it, once you try to hide who you are and you kind of look like you're sneaking around, then the government would nail you. But if you, if you're open about who you are, if you're like, yeah, I'm here to break up the government and everyone would say, oh, it's just you who likes to break up the government. What a crazy. And that's the kind of how I feel about BLM, that if you repeat exactly what they are, you look at like Marxist witches, what? That's <laughs> that's dumb. Who does that? And it's like there's actual quotes when they like, oh, by the way, yes, I am into witchcraft and Marxism. And you're looking at this like, how is that like that's yeah. crazy, but that is literally what they say. That is literally the quotes from the founders that that is their belief system. That is literally, you know what I mean? That is literally what they say. And mm -hmm. yet, and yet they're the, the people that support BLM, like they're like, but don't you care about black people? I'm like, no, I love black people. I love all people. I'm right. pro-human. <laughs> I'm pro-human. I don't, and, and so, it just, it, 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 I just can't figure out how, how we've gotten so like far removed that we are literally arguing to where, to where our race goggles and that we're teaching our children to, um, to now identify race. And then to say that, you know, one of the saddest things I watched was there was a, a mother making her, um, a Caucasian mother making her Caucasian little six-year-old son like saying that I'm sorry that I'm was born white, and, and and like making him hold that sign. Like, what is wrong with humans right now? Well, you know, like, what is if, that? If that woman is sorry that her son was born white, then maybe she should have made the decision to not have kids if that's how she feels about it. It's just like you know, if if that's your viewpoint. If you think that white people are so bad, then maybe you shouldn't procreate as a general rule. Like, general doesn't rule. that just, make more sense? It, it fascinates me. Like, I just, I don't understand like where we're, how we got so like, how we got so crazy. But, you know, I guess that's what happens when you, when you let the crazy in. <laughs> it comes yeah. in slow and you don't notice it. And then all of a sudden you turn around and you've got an organization riding in the streets and a guy... The guy on the news has a burning building going, oh, it's mostly peaceful. And, uh, like, and most people are like, oh, yeah, that's mostly peaceful. And the rest of us are going, the building is on fire. Like, uh -huh. at least if you're going to tell it, try to lie to us, go to where there's not a fire and tell us that. When, when they made, when there was that riot and what was his name? Um, the security guard. I'm drawing a blank on his name. Oh, oh security guard that was, um, was killed in the middle of that riot. And he was African American and he was Dorn, David yes, Dorn. David Dorn. David Dorn. David Dorn. When when he when he when he was murdered in the middle of that riot and he was black in the middle of a Black Lives Matter riot and how the black uh, lives matter, right? There was nothing said about him. And that's when, so I, I kept an open mind up until like, I mean, I as open mind as I, as, as smart as I educated as I am, you know what I mean? But when I saw that moment and I was like, okay, now here's a black man that became a victim of whatever this, you know what I mean? What they're standing up against. Why didn't they say anything? Why didn't they like, even at the very least apologize and say, we're sorry that he was the, no, they didn't even acknowledge it. They didn't even brush it. They just acted like he was just another white man. That was, you know what I mean? And that's the one thing that I really was bothered by. It was like, cause Black Lives Matter, they, they, they claim to, um, to, be, uh, to be against uh, white supremacy when they openly practice white supremacy. They encourage it and they practice it. They don't care when a black person kills a black person because if black lives matter, they would care 
if black li black lives are being injured by black human beings, right? Because all black lives would matter, right? So if the if the victims were black, it doesn't matter who would have been their assaulter, but it only matters if the white person does it. If the white person assaults, then the black lives matter. But a black person can assault the black and that black life doesn't matter. So that's why I'm like, that's practicing white supremacy. Now they've put the white more supreme than, than the black. They're the ones that practice open white supremacy. Right. You know? And not their I think that it's it's easy to vilify like, oh, this white cop shot this guy. Whereas it's a lot harder to go into your own neighborhood or your own situation and look and say, hey, look at what we're doing to each other. Uh -huh. it's, it's, a, it's a much bigger problem and it's harder to address and it doesn't forward no, their agenda. No, it doesn't go there because that's not, that's, not, that's not practicing open white supremacy. It's not, it's not a, enough of it. You know what I mean? If they want to fight it, they got to they gotta, they gotta live it up, right? The, my and my biggest my biggest issue with BLM period is the fact that if Black Lives Matter, the number one killer of all Black lives, the number one killer, is Planned Parenthood, and they fund them millions and billions yeah. of dollars. Yeah. So if they did care about Black lives, that would have been the first place they went to. But no, they openly fund them and they support them. So now I'm like do they do they really matter so when people come and tell me and they say blm don't you care about the black people I'm like does blm care about the black people let me know when the blm cares about the black people then i'll support blm yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean only until then because right yeah. now that is not what's happening no it's not at all and it's uh yeah so they're doing themselves a disservice but it it's it's not really about the black lives and that's that's the problem it's it's about their agenda and forwarding their marxist uh you know non-nuclear family um vision that they have for the world in every single, and in every single country in every single country that starts with socialism that ends up in communism always start with divide and the easiest way to divide is is race and then yep. sex sex and race and then you got you got gender, you got race, and you got age. You take the young, pin them against the old. You know what I mean? And 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 you, because every time you chop up human beings into these different li little divisions and you fight with one another, then 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 the the government gets to be you know your leaders get to be the the supreme. You know because while we stand united we're too we're strong that's why you can't go to church that's why the that's why the first thing they remove every communist country every socialist country the first thing they remove is god you can't have a supreme above government so they got to take god out of your life so that's where you know what i mean the first thing they remove is religion you know what i mean that's why they're easily into socialism and that's why they can definitely take us into communism and that's where i come in and say hold up I don't like communism. We escaped a communist country. Don't let it happen to you, to the U.S. You know, and then here I am. <laughs> here I am. Yep. Where Where are you from? From Laos. Oh, Laos. Nice. It's a sister country to Thailand, so Southeast Asia. Yeah, yep. we escaped, we escaped a communist country, and and my my father, um, we. Like we literally, we built a boat, he built a boat. We pretended to fish in the middle of the, like early in the morning, drugged us children underneath the boat so that he and my uncle could look like they're fishing while my aunt and my mom were under the, under the cover. They could stay quiet because they're adults. We were children, children, like one, two, three. So she drugged us so that we would stay sleeping. And while we crossed that river, that 30 minute Mekong River to Thailand, which was the free country. And, and, um, and Laos was under communism. When we crossed that, had we gotten caught, we would have been killed. Like he literally risked our lives. And then we got to Thailand and we were stripped of everything to make sure that we 
um, didn't have anything when we were escaping, you know what I mean? And so, and then we were in a refugee camp for four years in the Philippines before we got rescued to come to America. So to my shock, here I am, 42, and I'm like watching socialism and communism come to America and watching American citizens fight this, like fight for it and argue for it. It just, it blows my mind. And I'm like, when this country goes, if this country falls from its freedom and independence and liberty, the way, you know, the founding fathers created it and fought so hard to get it, when it falls, there is nowhere else to go. There is nowhere else for us to escape for freedom if we don't hold the line here in the yeah. U.S. now. And, you know, I, I wish, I mean, if you look at Florida and all the Cubans down there who are voting for Trump and, and you know, people with stories like yours, you know, I wish that these people who want socialism would listen to what is really going on because I mean like you said you're you're I can't imagine having to be in a position where the choice of possibly going and doing something where my kids would get killed if we got caught like I I I can't imagine how bad that situation must be because my instinct is to do everything I can to protect my kids to keep them alive but then again that's what your dad was doing it was just a way harder decision Mm -hmm. than we've ever had to make but I wish that these people would listen to these stories that it's not all of this oh free education free health care free free it it's not it's not any of the stuff that you think it is nothing nothing in life is free freedom isn't even free nothing in life is free so they everything comes at a cost you know and that's that's how they do it that's how they trick you free this free that get under our rules so we can control you. And then before you know it, it's tyranny and it's game over. Now you're like, you want to fight against slavery? Fight against your own slavery because we're walking into one right now. We're heading into one right now. And and we're, and we're marching towards it. And we're not only marching towards it, we're begging for it. There are people like going, please give us all this free stuff. Take our rights and freedoms away. Like we're begging for it. It's insane. It's insane. Yeah. And, you know, people are even um, sort of conditioned to be like, oh, when people say, no, 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 I, I won't do this or that because I, I value freedom and liberty. Like, oh, you're selfish. Like, you're rude. You're terrible. You should, you should do what's best for the group and not for yourself because the group will never let you down ever because it'll always be good. It'll be the group. <laughs> and it's this sort of a you know, come with us because it's us, <laughs> sort yeah. of a, like, a mentality, yeah. yeah. You know, the sort <laughs> the one-sidedness that the side that I'm on and support can never be the wrong side. I never have to assess my side's motives because, of course, we're the good guys. Like, I'm on it. I'm here. I'm good. Therefore, we're the good guys, right? Right, right. <laughs> and, it's, right. yeah. Marching, marching to the, to the drones. That's hence my title, you know, my shop name, Dare to be Original. <laughs> I'm always fighting the grain of what's, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just, I think that's the problem with, with uh, our society as a whole anyways, is because we're, nobody takes responsibility for themselves anymore. Like nobody practices autonomy. Like nobody wants to, we're always like quick to blame the other when, when, you, nobody can control anybody else. If something is happening to, uh, uh, to something is happening to me, it is because I chose it. It is because I allowed it. it is because my decisions led me to this point. You know, nobody says that anymore. You know, like they're always like, oh, it, it was because of that person. It's because of that guy, and it's because of her. It's because she said it's what they did. You know, mm-hmm. when when I feel like we're in a, we're in a day and age where we're constantly blaming and we've been doing it for a long time. I think that's, I think that's the problem with, with comfort and, and having like, when life is easy, what, what is the saying? You know what I mean? When life is easy, um, 
we make things hard, you know, because, but when life is hard, then you find things to be easy. And I think our lives have been so easy for so long that we're now making things hard. That's an interesting point because yeah, we're used to, I mean, anything we want, you work hard, you can have it, but people don't even want that anymore. No, it just doesn't they don't even make any sense. Uh-huh. No, they don't want that anymore. Now we're at the free part now. We want everything handed to us. <laughs> you know, uh, so with all the talk about all this big tech uh, censoring us. So it's funny because I never, speaking of going with the crowd, I never go with the crowd. But all of a sudden, like a couple of weeks ago, everybody's like jumping ship and going, I open a parlor account. I open a parlor account. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know what? I get a lot of slack for the things that I say. I'm going to guess that, you know, if I keep talking the way I talk, eventually I'm going to need to open <laughs> a parlor account. And then, and then I opened a Vero account, which they said, so parlor is supposed to be for Twitter to back up Twitter. And then Vero is a backup for Instagram, which I actually like Vero a lot. Um, just the layout and the fact that you can in- include links and everything. So I think it does a lot more than Instagram. Um, so I have that as a backup. And then there's a MeWe for Facebook, which I haven't done. And I think people are trying to get me to, but I'm so burnt on Facebook that I don't even want to back up for Facebook. Okay? So I don't even think I'm going to go do the MeWe just because I'm so burnt on, on them in general. But um, so I, so I have been, so I have left Etsy last year because I uh, met with a uh, Navy's Paulina, who is the founder of Galilee Life, the platform, and she's an online marketplace that loves Christians, like that, that loves Jesus Christ. So you don't have to be a Christian to buy or sell on there. Just know that the platform loves Jesus and they're praying for you. And I just thought it was a fantastic message. And I was like, I have to be a part of it. So I immediately when I heard about it I was like I'm gonna I'm leaving and I'm going right to I'm leaving Etsy and she's like you don't have to do that I was like no no no. this is where God wants me this is where I'm going right and it's been a year with this with this platform and I absolutely love them so much and then and then to find out like we already know what happened with Ravelry you know and then to find out now with your pattern on on Etsy with another innocent hat you know what I mean pattern and I was just like what and that's when actually you know that's when navies was like we need to do something big like we need to and then that's when she offered like she's like I'm she's been praying on it for a long time and then the answer just came to her um where she's like I'm just gonna give uh one year free for everybody that wants to sign up you know, to sell. And so the only thing you're going to end up paying for is PayPal fees for, for your, you know, which is a dollar to open your PayPal. And then, and then whatever sales you make goes to PayPal, like whatever, you know, percentage. And then Galilee Life will not take a penny from you for a whole year to try out the platform and see, you know what I mean? If you like it and if you love it as much as we do, you know, and so we were so grateful that you, showed up and, and, and got a shop, got your shop in there because yeah. right now in a time where they're censoring everything, you can't even sell a hat. That's not, you know? <laughs> yeah. It wasn't anything that would normally be censored. I mean, it was my stop the steel pattern, which, you know, it, it literally just says stop the steel and it's in protest of, you know, the, everybody saying that Biden has been declared the winner when technically he hasn't. And so, you know, it, that's why it was put out. But um, yeah, I've moved over all of my patterns to Galilee Life. Yeah, so Small Business Saturday, all my stuff is up on Galilee Life. It's going to be 10% off for the first weekend so that everybody can check it out. I'll drop a link. I'm excited about trying it. And Anne and I did the same thing that you did. We totally went and got all new accounts everywhere. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I like Vero too, but I just think that I have a lot of people on Instagram and I'm, I'm slightly addicted to it as I like to tell Anna, I, I will fall into a hole and I'll just be on Instagram all day long. So 
I'm, I'm the same way. Well, we're looking at where we get our news from, ladies. Our, our big news keeps landing on our page through Instagram. And that's how we found out about Ravelry. That's how I found out my knitting community is racist. You know, <laughs> all my news comes from Instagram. So I was just, yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. I have, I have an addiction to Instagram. But I think at this time where um, I'm not choosing to leave the platforms, it's when the platforms kick me out because that's inevitable at this point where freedom of speech is no longer, you know what I mean? When yeah, I've, I've gotten to the point where everything I share in my Instagram stories has a, do you want to share this? It's about the election warning on it every single time. I'm like, this isn't even about the election. And they're like, I don't know. It's about the election or COVID, or the election and COVID, or the COVID election, or are you sure, are you really sure you want to share this? Some people may say that this is, and I'm just like, I wonder how many of these I have to click through before they kick me off, because I'm on record time at this moment. I'm still going to share this. There was something so funny, because I was, there was something that DP just posted, and was, I don't know what it was, was it a picture of an ice cream? It was something so innocent, and so random. And then I had to share it with you and Dion. I was like, do you know you have a warning election for warning thing on your, on your like ice cream post? And it, like you, it was the most, she's like, she's like, I know, I don't, I don't know why. I'm like, what is it just with your name now? Is it tagged right with your account? Because a, a lot of uh, that is, is um, triggered by the hashtags you use, I think. Is that what it is? Oh, okay. I think so. Because so, I, I use personally a lot of like oh Trump women for Trump you know <laughs> so apparently those are bad though on Facebook um because I I shared our latest episode and I said that I put in quotes that your stop the steel hat had been banned from Etsy and Facebook put a thing under about the election results say and like elections are safe and secure <laughs> like you know trust the ministry of truth I know. Well, it's like one of my favorite memes that I've seen shared around. It's Winston Churchill, you know, we will fight them on the beaches, we will fight them wherever. And it says in the bottom that independent sources say that Germany is the projected winner of World War II. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. For four years, they for four years they kept saying, you know, for four years it was the Russian collusion, Russian collusion how like, you know, they, they, they hacked our, into our elections and everything. And then all of a sudden now we have to trust, you know, mm -hmm. the, the thing that, see, I, um, the thing that uh, I find fascinating, see, I, like I said, I'm a common sense enthusiast. Mm -hmm. Barack Obama had how many, he was the most what, popular uh, up until now, until Biden became mm -hmm. the most popular when that man couldn't get 20 people into a stadium, but he's the most popular and, and he beat out Barack Obama's numbers, which I'm just like, something's not right there. <laughs> that bad math doesn't like, quite go mm, for me. <laughs> like, no. That's just, that's just my common sense of this. I don't need to know all the, you know, or the fact that North Carolina was at 94% for three weeks. 94% of their count for three weeks because that 6% right. was one hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? We really struggled in counting that last 6% for three weeks. Right, right. Well, you know? Yeah. Common you, sense enthusiast. And, you know, it, it, it doesn't take that long. And then all the voting things shut down in the middle of the night. And then all of a sudden, Biden was ahead. Yeah. With like, over 100% voter turnout. It's amazing. <laughs> It's a miracle. <laughs> wow, people really care. You know, well, it's interesting and in somebody had mentioned like why, um, because they're projected to lose the House and the Senate and somebody had made a really good point about um, how, how they could have lost that so much in the House and the Senate by, by those votes is because when they were doing those fake votes, all they cared about was checking off Biden that they didn't care about the rest of that ballot and so they let that ballot go you know what I mean so all they cared about was just that one so they duplicated all that for Biden so you get Biden like have such a high number but then the rest of the Senate and the House the rest of the Democratic 
party like got nothing that the Republicans are now like shooting to win so high and all like that that's an interesting math right right um, one, like that's a really interesting point because that would be the only way that that happened right you know? and um I believe Rudy Giuliani brought that up that he was in Gettysburg Pennsylvania today and I only caught the back half of that meeting but it was really good I really enjoyed it whoever that bald guy is elect him your governor okay because he had a really great speech I don't even remember his name I'm sorry apologies to the bald bald man that's racial profiling but your speech it was on fire you're awesome (laughs) (laughs) elect him to to your I, I, again, I don't remember what his name was because I, was, I wasn't paying that close attention, but good for him. But um, anyways, Rudy Giuliani brought up that mm-hmm. thing that, um, you know, you have to, you know, like all of the pens were in the same color <laughs> and they're going, you know, like stuff like that. And um, Cindy Powell brought it up. And I thought what she said was very interesting that only because the turnout for Trump was so much so many people voted for Trump that it revealed the voter fraud that you had to stop the voting machines in order to fix the election that the al- her her claim that the the algorithms in the voting machines mm-hmm. were so were set in such a way that they the algorithm that how it was set up they assumed it would be close it was so high that they had to twist the algorithms again in order to get it down mm-hmm. in order to make Mm -hmm. Biden a winner and also Biden uh again the hypothetical winner is the winner in the record fewest counties anyone has ever won by (laughs) yeah like oh that's uh, another math thing math is hard (laughs) and then there's there's the stat where there were like 800 ballots where Trump the only vote on the ballot was for Trump and there were like 145,000 where the only vote was for Biden. Like, come on, guys, if you're gonna like fake it, at least like try to make it believable. Yeah. But, that's, that's so it. as a side note, when we're removed from YouTube for talking about this, you guys mm-hmm. are gonna be able to find us on Rumble. Just so you know, I'll post links. <laughs> you know, interesting, that's my next, after Thanksgiving, I'm creating a Rumble account because- <laughs> I mean, I haven't uploaded our videos just because, as I shared last week, my life has been crazy. This week's been a lot better, but you, you know, we're we're easing into real life. So we are gonna have a rumble account. Stay tuned. And if you don't, if you get if we get removed before that happens, I'll send an email. <laughs> Make sure you're on my newsletter list. <laughs> Unless that doesn't work. And that point just like find whatever website you can and keep typing in our name eventually yeah. we'll be there yeah yeah just That's search for us point. we'll we'll come up at some point <laughs> yeah because i feel like um you know with all the yeah so many blm bad math I, I love bad math anymore so many so many bad math and believe me as an asian i know what bad math is i recognize bad math <laughs> exactly <laughs> You look at the, you know, numbers and you're like, no, nope. no numbers, okay? <laughs> no, but um, it, it gets pretty scary because it was like with the, so I, I definitely have to do the rumble um, because of, of YouTube. But even like, I feel like even like uh, your newsletters outlets, like, like MailChimp and everything, you know, like the majority of us are on MailChimp because it's free up until 2000. So I feel like even they're going to start censoring pretty soon if they haven't been, because I almost feel like they've done it to a couple of people where I, they put out a notice saying that they reserve the right to censor. I thought I I thought something like that. And I was like, okay, now we're heading into that direction too. It's basically every, it's basically everybody, which makes it very scary. That's why I think right now, that's why my husband and I are restudying the constitution. Like we are restudying it and, and, and 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 relearning it again because I think we're we're at the turning point where we're you, we're gonna need to figure out what our rights are and the fascinating thing about is relearning the Constitution is how much rights we actually have that we've just continued to keep giving up mm-hmm. you know and letting go so if you get anything out of this interview relearn your Constitution. But you know what? 
even as a constitutionalist now, we're radicals. So you'll get banned for that too. <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty much. If you're not in lockstep with what the left has going on, you know, pro-life, pro Second Amendment, pro church, you're you're not wanted and, and you're gonna be going against the grain. So yeah. Just and get I used to it. I, oh, I'm I'm behind you. So I think at this point where, you know, when you when you were referring to that Ravelry video, which I know you guys are gonna leave a link uh, below, I just uh, shared with the two um, with my two controversies. Since then I have just been in full full force in this world. That's why I call myself an SJW. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like now like in full force of it that um, I'm just I don't even think I'm pro-life anymore I'm gonna go over right ahead and just say that I'm an abolitionist altogether like I want it to stop I want it to be gone I want it to be over with I don't even want to play around with just being pro-life and just like you know like slightly and partially like I want it gone and I think being an abolitionist I'm already going to be, you know, uh, what's the word, like outed by, right. by just about everybody at some point, you know what I mean? But right. I think that's the, be like if, like I, like I say in every single video that I have, if we don't value life at every stage, at mm -hmm. every stage, if we don't value life at every stage, we as human beings will always struggle to value life at any stage yes. and because of that we are living it we are in the middle of it because we are not valuing life at every stage we are struggling at any stage and and it's clear it's so clear you know mm -hmm. how, how how humans are treating each other and how we're living you know right. yeah well Anne and I are still doing our patriotic knit along and it goes until the fifth. So there's still one more week to join in, knit up a hat, make a Christmas present, get, you know, get your stuff ready early. Um, and everybody who enters our knit along on Instagram can win a skein of chicken lady fiber arts or da -da -da. I love when I wake up in the morning and Donald Trump is president. Hopefully that'll be a, a mug that you can use for the next four years and have it be true. But um, that's right. <laughs> join us. Amen. Then along. Anything else, Anne? Oh, um, just just to mention, um, if you're if you're on Instagram, um, I had this problem come up this week that somebody said that. Um, that you know we hadn't seen their their that they had been a part of the knit along and we hadn't seen it or anything um and they had a closed instagram account so if that is the case you know do message us we still want you to be a part of the giveaway but if we if you have a closed account we can't see your hashtags so just just a reminder for that um yeah, because right because that was a little bit of an issue but yeah we're thanks for joining us guys <laughs> thanks for joining our yeah. knit along Yes, yes, we're very excited about it. And there's still another week, so there's time. Time to get in, get it done, make a present. Um, make a plan. But, <laughs> but we want to thank Phone for coming on today. It was so much fun having you. Thank you. I had a blast. <laughs> Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, join us next week. We'll see you. <laughs> and have a happy holiday weekend. <laughs>